what HTML5 is. It's a new specification which is maintained and updated by Word, a wide web consortium, V3C. It's intended to replace those old uh, HTML4 and X, HTML1 and DOM level 2 standards. But they, you can always use them. HTML5 is not yet in recommended in recommended state. That means that um, it's not ready. And the current plan is that HTML5 will be published as a piece. As you can see, first one will be HTML5.0, and after that, 5.1 and 5.2 and so on. So. Um, What you really need to keep in mind is that web is evolving. Web is evolving in enormous, uh, how could I say, uh, very fast. And it, those, those things that we are seeing today are going just a little piece of that what we are going to see. Uh, you may note that CSS specifications are split into multiple modules. So uh, CSS specifications are already getting those recommended stages. Uh, and CSS even have some CSS4 um, modules that are already in draft mode. That doesn't mean they are going to be recommend in recommended state very soon, but they are coming. And CSS and every, everything is evolving. So you do something today, but tomorrow you may be able to do it with way better. Uh, I'm going to talk also some other techniques what our technologies what are not part of the HTML standard. Uh, HTML5 is uh, is uh, based on what we HTML5 specification. So what we is is a group that were uh, founded when HTM standards wasn't getting anywhere. We are, was stick in the HTM5 and uh, no, sorry, HTM4 and I think it, that's good. Yeah. Uh, and wait, what we is start to create their own implementations and. Uh, own ideas how we could push these things forward. And we 3 c get those HTML specifications for what we G and start to build up with. Uh, and what we G have nowadays a living standard. So they are constantly creating new things and trying new things. And see what the developers think about them. As we can see, not all of the specifications are part of the ATM uh, spe uh, specification. There are many, many things that we can do. And this is very good picture about how wide the playground is. If you have any questions, you can ask him at any time or after the presentation. Okay. Let's go forward. Uh, why we should use these new features? Uh, 
you may think that these features don't work because not every browser supports them, but no, that's not true. HCM5 is uh, designed that way that you can use it, and in all the browsers that don't support those features, just won't um, show those things uh, so richfully, or there might be some functionalities that are not working. But we can also create a backup plan for those older browsers. So you, if you are using HTML5 semantics, you can use them. There is no point of not using them. And we have some examples coming away. Uh, what we need to do to create web pages that are usable for all browsers, we need to check which features are supported by that browser that user is using. And very good library for this is Modernizer. You can check it's uh, SVG supported or it's something uh, HTML5 videos or something is supported. And you can uh, create a backup plan, example using Flash or other plugins or JavaScript libraries. With older EA browsers, older than EA9, uh, you always should include HTML5, Shiv, or Shim. They are both the same thing. It's just a one letter. Because if you don't use it, you can't style your elements, your HTML5 elements. The mo most important thing is that um, when we are using HTML5, it's more, it's easy to exchange the usability and create better search results for search engines. So our web page will look better, but you, all, you will also find them a better way. Oh, it, I think there was something that I was missing. <coughs> yeah. With CSS, we can also create one layout for all the devices. So the layout will, will scale according to, example, reports, width or height or anything about, anything like that. Example, my presentation is scalable. Of course, we have, I have done some backup plans for the older browsers, so this will also work at, uh, even in EA9, but it will look a little bit uglier because EA9 and, uh, I'm sorry, EA8 and older browsers doesn't support vector graphics if you don't use plugins. Let's go forward. Uh, some tips of when we start developing HTML5. Doc type declaration. Uh, you must remember those HTM4 times when HTM declaration was long like hell and you never remember how it was supposed to be written. In HTML5, it's simple. Uh, in fact, the stock type isn't needed because, um, because of the doc type declaration. It's needed that browsers go to the standard mode. There are multiple modes, quicks modes, standard modes, and uh, if browser doesn't work on standard mode, uh, some features will, like, will not work, or the layouts and other things look very, 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 very odd. So, 
I would say. In HTML5, there is not an X, um, pure X HTML5. It's included in HTML5. So you can write HTML5 as HTML syntax or an XML syntax. Uh, some other things are also um, made easier for developer. Uh, you may drop some attributes that were mandatory and create a way faster these websites. Also, thank God, frame, frame sets and no frames are drop out. So developers can't use them if they want to, their web page to be valid. Okay, new CSS features. Uh, if we look at the current web page, there are uh, public web pages. There are web pages that is designed for mobile phones. There might be some uh, other device device designs or other things that are has to do because uh, layouts aren't so flexible with CSS we can create those flexible and um, very adaptive very adaptive uh, web pages so there's no need to create something that has already done once to twice or something like that. Uh, if we use CSS features, we don't have to use those uh, JavaScript drivers or Java, JavaScript calculations, so our web page will work very, fa very much faster and uh, those things will work similarly according, across the process. Okay, let's. A little bit. Do you see this, or is it too small? I can also. Yeah, it's us. So then it's us. No, I will use scroll bar. It's okay. My mouse just went away. <coughs> Okay, uh, it might look a little bit ugly, but I will explain everything. So in CSS, we have a way better way to select different items. Example, we can select just uh, uh, some attributes according to the words they are starting or ending or including or something like that. The first examples show how to do this. So uh, we can create very, very flexible and very, very advanced properties and functions with those, with all of these selectors. Uh, if you see, here's the span element. In fact, in here, 
and it contains a class named stars. Okay, we have a CSS selector which found, found uh, try to find out every span which class starts with the name start and so on. Okay, NUTSAD pseudo classes, you may have a table. You want to select a certain every third or every fourth or uh, two of the first or anything like that. So the rows will get a different background color or uh, certain elements will get different CSS styles. With Nintzla pseudo class, we can do exactly that. As we can see, if we select first child, okay, this is the sum, same as first child. Nintzla is the same as the first child pseudo class. Okay, uh, how about Nintzla uh, minus n plus two plus 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 two? Uh, it gets it selects first two rows that are under the same parent. Uh, how about Nintzad odd? Okay, every odd rows get selected or elements. Uh, how about Nintzad n, uh, 3n plus 1? It means that it selects uh, first row and every third row. Quite simple, but uh, it creates many, many possibilities. Okay. How about other nint pseudo classes? Uh, we have nint of type. So it only selects spans which are uh, <coughs> two first span of in some parents. And nint last of type. It just get select those elements backwards. So it uh, selects uh, last of those span elements. Okay, last child is the same as the last of type, but it won't take the type. So uh, it just got, gets the, it selects span if it's last element of its parents. How about relational pseudo classes? Okay, uh, first of type selects first element of its type. Only child, if it's only child, it gets selected. Only of type, if it's only type, it gets selected. So quite simple. Uh, the name very much tells what it's all about. Last child. It selects the last child. As we can see, it selects last. And how about the next example, last of type? It selects last of the type. So, as we can see, it selects last span. So, it, this gets selected. But this declaration also affects this. And how about this only of type? Okay, it's only upper element in this, like under this parent, so it gets selected. So quite simple. Uh, other, other CSS selectors root select root uh, in HTML, this is HTML element. Span empty, selects empty span. Target selects element given in, in the URI. Let's see how this works.
Okay, I have um, create uh, ID attribute and give it target test. If I include this, the address bar, did I type it right? Um, did something happen? Oh, it's get italic. I just miss it. So uh, I give the object and it's uh, and CSS style styles gets uh, gets implemented in the element. Other uh, if input type is enabled, the style gets implement and so on. So there is a discipline and check and selection. So this explains themselves as this selection, this is selection color. And not attribute, it's like not attribute in the, uh, in any, in any development. So it doesn't select the object what is in the in the declaration. Okay, let's go to more important things. Or let's change browser. Okay, there are some CSS animations. Uh, I don't know how good it will look from the monitor, but uh, it should change its color. It has a shadow, uh, rounded corners, and some movement. Uh, it is possible to create as many keyframes we want. So the animation would, uh, could be moving infinitely or it could move past infinite points. Okay, there's uh, keyframes from one, uh, from 0% to 100%, but we can also use decimals, so it, it isn't a problem. Uh, let's see this presentation. I already have spoken to it, but uh, I have used some of the new background properties and other things in this. So we can use multiple backgrounds in one background um, decoration. So example, I can uh, use images or I can use shadows and uh, this kind of thing, uh, things. and create them as a layers. So example, these shadows in the corners and in the front page where there's a gradient and a radial gradient and so on. I will, so, so I don't know how good this will look, but uh, we have a, linear gradient according in top of the bottom. Then we have a radial gradient in, in the middle of these presentations and it will get darker to the corners. And these shadows that are in, like from the, behind these pictures are exactly 
created in SVG filters, so they are not CSS, but similar, not quite fancy, but similar shadows are able, we are able to create with CSS properties. Okay, let's get back to the original presentation. Uh, I've already spoke about the new CSS units. They are very good when we are creating uh, designs that need to be scalable. So rem, what is meant? It meant that um, we give one base font size and everything is um, scaled according to it. So uh, this means that we, we mm, adjust every font size according to body elements font size. But these two are viewport height and viewport width, so this is viewport, what we are seeing. Everything that goes beyond this or outside of this area uh, are not in the viewport. So, where is my mouse? Uh, so, we can uh, Add your font size according to viewport. Example, I have used base font size 3.7% uh, of the viewport height. We are able to include external fonts with font size, the font face, sorry. Uh, and we are even, we can even make some basic calculations with CSS. We can uh, adjust those uh, width or height or whatever we want with example like this, 100% minus head pixels. Uh, what about media queries and responsive design? We can use those uh, at media decoration. So uh, we can create CSS styles and they are implemented only uh, when viewports uh, width is created than 700 pixels or something like that. So we can create these media queries at any uh, things. We can uh, put multiple columns into web page and uh, put them in the same column when there is no room for all of them. Do you want to see a code of these media queries? Okay. It's a little bit easier for me. Okay, uh, I have used media queries to adduce those 
uh, red ribbons. These are the red ribbons. So add is there. Uh, let's go back to the, my browser died, or computer. So add is there, uh, bottom parameter. So they move according to the aspect duration. And they look always the same and are always uh, you know, positioned the same place <coughs> uh, where, where, when we are compared to the font fonts, uh, font position. It is simple. Okay, let's continue. Just a moment, I must add this. this. Because of the resolution, I will show this at a different window. Uh, these are, this gallery is done with CSS. So all styling is done with CSS. Of course, those uh, some of the functions may use JavaScript, but all transitions and uh, animations and these are done with CSS. We can use 2D or 3D properties. Uh, when I click this element, yeah. JavaScript is called, uh, but uh, these all transitions and uh, all these uh, image fades and other things are done with the uh, CSS. Uh, this is Apple's demo. You see that the background blurs and everything that is done with CSS. It looks very smooth. Okay. Something just broke because. The resolution is. Bad for this. This is better. Uh, how about the uh, HTML5 elements? There are many types of elements. Some of them are only meant to be as structural elements, and other are meant to be as functional elements. Mm. The main purpose for those structural elements is to uh, mm, adjust every data to be a bit more clear to the search engine or if you have some disabilities uh, like you're blind, you need those um, machines to read uh, or applications to read a web page and uh, um, crawl every data out of there. These structural HTML elements help with that. And you can also, you can already use them. I have used uh, all of these 
in these presentations and it still works on the older browsers. So it doesn't matter if, you, if it, the, it's HCM5, it doesn't matter, it works. It just don't mm, work as good as in this uh, current browsers. Uh, there are some functional HTML elements and I'm going to show you some uh, examples of these. Uh, what these structural elements are meant to used? As I say, they are meant to be used as tools for search engine and disability users and uh, some uh, other machines like or applications like browsers. So their main purpose is not to um, so user some create stuff. Here we have an ex example. As we can see, we have a header. It just implements that uh, this is top, top area of this uh, article or section or web page or whatever. It can include anything you like. It just tells that this is either area. Uh, so, in either I have put a navigation because um, very frequently navigation is included in the either it's uh, same for all si sites and all the pages. So I tell navigation is included in either. This is like div element, but this will tell. Um, search engine or some other crawl that here's the navigation. I can go deeper or I can uh, find more info behind these links. Okay, article. It's the main thing that the, that page is going to so each article, like it says, each article. Uh, if you have front page, um, there is no need for one big article that contains uh, very much, uh, very much information in one article tag. It uh, should be um, split into multiple articles or use section or some other uh, some other HTML elements. You can also use and you should always use div and other other elements that are commonly uh, uh, commonly used and are meant to mm, meant to uh, organize data for layout purposes. So don't use article and sections if you just wanna create something fancy for your layout. They are meant to really tell us that there is something, uh, something information in, inside this. In article, I have a H group which includes H1 and H2. As we know, Never use H2 uh, more than once in one web page. That was the rule when we are coding HTML4. But in HTML5, there will be multiple H1, H1s. So if I have article, it must have some uh, title. Article's main title can be written like this in H1. So there could be so many art, uh, H1s 
as there are articles or other uh, other <coughs> data. Okay, O group just tells that this H2 is a subtitle for this H1. So we are grouping these together. Okay, I have some lorem ipsum for paragraph and I have a reference to this picture. Uh, this tells to search engine that this picture is related to this content. Anna, how it's done to the image? I have created feature. It had ID, which is the same. Ajax error. In figure, I have the caption. This is the title for the picture. If you wanna have some additional information about the picture, use the caption in figure. Okay, after that, I have a section. So I have a different section inside the article which is uh, loosely or related or is a, uh, um, if this article mm, is telling you something about computers, uh, in section uh, there could be a little bit more information about example some one uh, computer uh, manufacturer which is not really core context of this article. Aside is uh, similar to section, aside is uh, even more loosely connected to the um, article. In section you may use the section in the way that you um, uh, put big articles in the multiple uh, sections. So uh, a side is uh, related very uh, loosely to the core context and the section is still related but it does want to create a little bit of uh, little bit of a structuring for your big article. After that I have a future. It just tells that this is the end of this uh, article or page or whatever. This is the bottom. And what I have used in here, I have used time element which tells that this time element indicates publishing date and gives date time. This is always um, when a search engine comes to this site and crawls it, uh, it will know that this article was published on uh, Eight of September of 2011. We get better search results and better uh, the content that we are searching is better related to the words we are typing. Okay, new functional HTML elements. They reduce to need to use the additional plugins or and they also use to move those heavy loads to the client side. Uh, 
we have nowadays we have mobile phones that are capable of uh, showing videos and uh, showing these new modern web pages. It is because we have HTML5. Without HTML5, those uh, operations would be too heavy or too, uh, uh, or are unable to do. And now we can do this. As we can see, we can do this with the JavaScript libraries or uh, other plugins, but they always uh, get a huge amount of resources. And you have to install it, and you, you can't use it at home if you, uh, if you have a different operation system and that does, browser doesn't support something and blah, blah, blah. Uh, when we use these st standard elements and standard functions, we can use these uh, applications everywhere. But if you design it correctly, it's still usable with all the browsers. Okay, let's have a look about basic functional HTML5 elements. Mark element indicates that there's something that needs to be popped out or highlighted or something like that. So example, if I'm searching something from the web page and the web page uh, crawls its uh, data and show it to me. It would be very good it have highlighted the founded <coughs> words like this. And mark element is exactly meant for these types of need. As we can see, we can use this keyword or an error or something that needs to be popped out from the content. Okay, progress bar. As you can see, we have one progress bar element. It's uh, have initial value and maximum value. And I'm updating that progress bar via JavaScript. I'm just changing the value, and this is um, this is then handed via browser. So browser is creating all these elements for me. I haven't do anything about. It. I haven't even uh, create CSS for them. Continuous. How this works. Let's change. Browser, just a moment. As you can see in Firefox, I have a continuous progress bar. It just rolls, run, rolls, and rolls. It's like uh, those GIF animations you may see when we are loading something. You may use the progress bar like that. Uh, in all the browsers that doesn't support this, I have created backup. Let's put this in here. I've created a backup picture. It's GIF. It's just loading, 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 loading. So the backup plan is very, can done very easily. I've just included image stack inside the progress element. So these new elements are defined that way that every uh, thing we want to happen uh, is 
handed via attributes. And everything inside of the elements are showed if uh, browser doesn't support that element. Because uh, EA, it doesn't understand this element. So it just renders like uh, any element. It's, it renders it a block or inline element according to which CSS definitions we have. Uh, we have a demeter. And if you look, then EA goes, okay, there's an image. Let's show it. And okay, progress element stops, but I don't know what to do about it. So let's continue. So everything is uh, designed that way, that there's always a backup plan. And it, it's even easily, it, it could be easily done. As you can see, there, is, there isn't progress bar that's updating. It's the textual form that is updating. And it's done with spawn element inside the progress element. Other browsers that support this progress doesn't so show this fun element, but EA will. So nothing gets broken when we use these. Okay, we have uh, tickets left. This indicates how many tickets we have left. Let's change browser again. But it should look like it's uh, like progress bar but it uh, is uh, it has some uh, static values or values that no, doesn't mean to be updated via script they just uh, need to show that this is meter some uh, something that needs to be measurement or measured or show. Okay. This looks that we have some holiday, Christmas holiday and store is closed. When store is closed, this information needs to be shown to the end user. But when the search engine or other crawler comes to this site, it sees that, okay, there's a time element again. What this time element is uh, meant for? Okay, it's just date time. It has no... Um, uh, published date or some other attributes. It just gives a date time. So we know that this information that is meant for people is converted to the way that the um, search engine can understand it. It doesn't need anything to pass because it's always in this form. <coughs> okay. We have a really long word and we want to break it apart. But we don't want to break it apart if we don't have to. That's why we use this little chuck. This is, uh, we can, a uh, browser can do a beer. Uh, so line break at this point, but it's optional. It doesn't be. Uh, it's, it doesn't have to be done if the whole text is, um, or the area is so wide that the whole text is fitted to it. So let's change. I have to close my. Chrome because it died. Just a moment. <coughs> uh, 
I just, this is additional info, but you could see in the, this is how it looks like uh, browsers that doesn't support it here. It just shows additional info right, uh, right away. But when my if Chrome is starting, yes, this. Okay. Just a moment. Okay. And I don't like when Chrome is doing this, they're scaling. Okay. It looks better. If you have some uh, very odd bugs that you have encountered when uh, dealing with uh, SVG or something else you can ask me because uh, I found quite a few of them because these features aren't so widely used so uh, different browsers do uh, things a little bit uh, differently and there are still bugs. Okay, this is how additional info should look like. Browser did this. Uh, I don't need JavaScript or anything else, or CSS. It just created it. And how I created it? Yeah. I have a details element, it means that it creates element that contains summary as a title or summary, what do you want to call it, and then you can have some data in it, I have used table. So when I click this arrow, the table will be shown. I can uh, determine that this is always open or uh, always closed or something like that. But, uh, this is quite handy when we have a lot of data in one page. All the, our unsupported browsers will show it like this. The browser that support this function will uh, squeeze the data for more readable and more user uh, usability form. Okay, how about data list? I use mainly Opera. Okay, let's start. Uh, how about, okay, Internet Explorer, Chrome. So, I have a straight um, auto, auto complete when I have used uh, just a Lower, I have used data list. I can put some uh, predefined options in data list, which then will be uh, suggest when I write something to this text input. And how it look like in the older browsers, 
where is my yeah it was in oh, wait a second ah. it looks like it's just text in or data list or whatever you want to say but it's just basic input element. Then we have a range. Uh, I'm sorry. I have a, I'm, I have a, some input elements that have predefined numbers it can show and it even do the calculations automatically it's quite handy <laughs> I don't know handy but uh, these are the little features that will make the web work like we would want it to work without uh, extra work. Okay. Uh, I can also edit this if I want. There is an attribute that is quite simple. It's just editable. Uh, this is very easy way to create content management or something like that. It's a simple little thing. When editable tag is uh, defined, content is editable, you can write to it. Uh, even uh, done some little styling to it, but it's, uh, it's done with JavaScript and other, other things. But when I click outside, I can call JavaScript uh, function to update this data to a, a server or something like that. So little attribute did this I can make this happen. So if I'm um, administrator of some web page and I see that there's something wrong in the content, I would just click in it correct it and it will get to the server and other users which ha don't have these admin rights use it or uh, so uh, sees it like any other content okay form elements let's back to opera As you can see, all of these fields are input fields. And if browser doesn't support some input uh, type attributes values, it always use text as a default input type. So all the browser sees all these form input fields as text. Okay, how Opera will see them? This is time. Uh, it's like I can write to it or just select via arrows. Okay, week, uh, what week is it? Week 40. Month, oh, it's, uh, let's select something else. <coughs> I 
I don't need uh, JavaScript or Libra libraries, jQuery, UI, date picker, or anything like that. These are already in the browser if browser starts to support it. So I don't need to have, I don't need to do any extra work. I just put that this input, type, input field is uh, date. And then this is created. And all the browsers users, they just have to type the date from themselves. But when you are using the modern browser, it looks like this. Our date and time and local date and time work the same as those others. Okay, email. Uh, I tried to create not an email address. So that the email address isn't valid. Uh, I'm using Finnish Opera, so, so that notification is in Finnish, but this is valid in function. I have just determined that this field is required and its type is email. I empty it it gets the placeholder. I have created placeholder. I don't need to use JavaScript for uh, create this effect that there is a predefined value which will get empty when I click it to it. It will, and it shows, um, it notifies that my email address wasn't correct. How about now when that is empty? It um, tells that this field is required. So they have uh, required uh, required attribute and type checks. Required and type checks. How about phone? Uh, in phone there are multiple ways to tell the phone number so it really doesn't do any validation about it. I can even, I would really, I must. As you can see, this is not the phone number, but there's no validation because the phone numbers are so widely uh, so widely used that there are so many forms about it that it's impossible to validate. How about the UR? There's a validation. It's not required, as you see, the form, ele form gets submitted, but when I type to it, okay, it converts it, because this was valid, but if it contains the characters that are not part of the URL, uh, then it shows the same notification as email. Okay, color picker. You can also use custom or something like this. This is just one input field. Search, this is meant for uh, search box. It has no validation, but it tells uh, search engine and other uh, applications that crawls your website that this is search box and it's easily uh, selectable. Okay, number. This number. And there is uh, some min and max values. I can't type It shows that you, I must type a number that is uh, at most a wife. 
Okay, range. Uh, example, there's uh, very m many questionnaires where I need to say that uh, I agree with this or I don't agree with this and there's uh, some uh, radio buttons that I must click. When we use range, variety of the answers will be much wider and uh, those analysts programs could use um, the data more specific, uh, more specific use cases and uh, do it more effectively. Let's continue. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes, this is a uh, placeholder. Placeholder attribute. Yes, yes. Uh, yes, it's specified by me. It's called a uh, placeholder attribute. As we can see in email, placeholder. <coughs> it can be used in any input field. It's very handy. Okay, HTML5 videos. We have, this video is from YouTube. I have selected I want to use HTML5 videos from YouTube. So this is HTML5 videos. Let's look the code how I could use this by myself. Video element is the key element and uh, I can create many of these and everything that is inside of it is deeply um, deeply analyzed. So the, all the process that doesn't understand these elements select plus backup. So everyone shows the video. If the plus isn't supported, then we could show some message that you need to update your browser or you need to flash plugin. First, we have to select the correct video that the browser can play. There are three types of uh, video formats that are currently supported by the browsers. There are uh, WebM OG or MP4. This is, these two are free formats and free to use. MP4 uh, means in this case H.264 uh, which is a license. Uh, Apple and Microsoft are using this format, so they are uh, they aren't supporting natively any other formats. Any other browsers like Chrome, Safari, Opera supports these formats, and Chrome even supports this format. So there isn't one format that is currently supported by all browsers. So you must at least create Cox, uh, create two sources. Okay, in video there, there could be some tracks. There could be uh, subtitles, captions, descriptions, anything like that. So we can really adjust that video the way we would. Uh, do it with example flash or something like that. We can create multiple subtitles and the user can select the one that is its own language. Do you have 
some questions about this. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's still a playground. Every browser supports what they want to support. And uh, 8.264 uh, uh, is licensed, so uh, Mozilla or something, or, or other open source don't want to pay for it. Yeah. So they want to use these free formats. And, uh, so I don't know, maybe sometime, maybe, maybe. but not in right now. Uh, and these source our browser will select the source. If it supports the first, it select the first. If it uh, don't support the first, it go forward and so on. So this also matters which, um, how these are. Uh, how these are mm, uh, in which uh, order these are. Even uh, the older iPhones, they don't support the order, so uh, for iPhones there must be a certain order that the iPhone can play HTML5 videos. Okay, let's look about Canvas. Canvas is an uh, element that can be, uh, can be, how would I say, you can uh, create objects via JavaScript or elements or graphics or anything like that. So uh, with script, there's a possible to create this kind of things. This is the basic example. These are quite um, easy to done. These are just basic uh, color, uh, color graphs and so on. And there's uh, some uh, shadows and that's and something like that. So canvas is element that will take any uh, that determines forms of data to edit. And we can create the data uh, uh, dynamically or use pictures or something like that. Let's have a little. This uses canvas element. There are some pictures that are inserted in the canvas area. And after that, I can uh, move them and put some uh, put some the, uh, put some borders to it or something like that. And I can even download those pictures with Canvas. This will take a while. This is quite a massive example. <coughs> okay. I want to create some I want to create some graphs or some uh, definitions or something like that. I don't need to use uh, Visio or something, uh, some other desktop applications. I can use it, I can do it with HTML5. This is applications, application that use Canvas, of course, there's a lot of other things going behind this. But as you can see, 
this will look, this will work like a native application. And what is very fancy about this is that two people can edit the same content at the same time. I can share this same content with another user. And he sees what I have drawn. He adds some elements to it. Create some additions. And it's appeared in my other browser or other user. It's quite amazing what we can do with these new technologies. I don't even want to think how many hours they have spent with this application, but <laughs> it's quite amazing. How about Canvas and WebGL? Let's change browser. As you can see, this is pool or eight ball or whatever you like. 3D graphics shown in the browser. It is smooth and it is playable. Second, I wanna. I have to use. Those. When I found the right key, okay. But I can also play this. This have. get broken with the Chrome, but it works in Firefox example. These are good, good, good examples. Okay. It thinks that I don't have, uh, this Firefox version doesn't have a GL support, but it has, it's just uh, disabled. Let's continue. Uh, microdata, some a bit boring, you might think, but it's very uh, handy for those search engines and other uh, other applications. Uh, Uh, the data is, it's very rare that the data is in one uniform form or one uniform type. So we must point out some specific things, example, address or name or something like that. There's the author information. It looks like any other author information, but how will it look in the search results? Let's have a look. shows that there's uh, more information about that data, in that data. My name, it is Matti Lahti, it's correct. Photo is located in that, or, or, or of course, because I use inline uh, test tool, this isn't real. Title, uh, a 
volition. And how about address? Okay, it founds in the more specific uh, vocabulary called address vocabulary, and it there we find street ad address, postal code, locality, country name, and so on. And in search result, you see it's located in Jyväskylä. It shows the company and the uh, uh, affiliation. And even picture, it might show a picture in this uh, left side. Quite a uh, great way to pop out those search results and uh, create some uh, things that does, uh, other web pages doesn't use, doesn't use right now. And it's quite easily done. It's done with item probe attributes. You must uh, say that these data will use this kind of vocabulary. It use predefined vocabulary that is found from that address. You can create your own vocabularies or use these, uh, these already made vocabularies. And I create, this is item scope. From these sections, this information should be found. And address. It uses uh, some more specific vocabulary and it's mapped to its data. <coughs> HTML5 drag and drop. Uh, with desktops we have used to drag and drop things. It's very easy. It um, uh, it, crea it creates the feeling that something is happening and we can do things very fast. We don't need to use plugins. And we can even create a portal like web pages with drag and drop. You can drag some uh, block to another place and save it for your, uh, with your personal information. So when you come back to that web page, it always look like you have wanted to want it to look. I have some example. There's a shopping cart. Resolution problem, so something it shopping cart. I drag and drop items to shopping cart and prices calculated simultaneously. Very easy, very fancy way to do shopping. I have, I wonder why this isn't already used at those uh, very popular, ooh, very popular shops or some other things we could use this. This is uh, very widely supported. <coughs> Let's change browser. Okay. Cross document messaging. Um, we have problems when we use iframes or mass ups or some other things. How we can pass messages between iframe 
and uh, original web page. With cross document messaging, we can do this. We can pass uh, things between these two uh, sites. It works only when those both, uh, both windows or size or frames, when they all are activated in the same browser. So they don't work, uh, example, in the way that uh, I can do this messaging uh, when something isn't selected or shown or something like that. It's for security reasons. Let's see how it works. Simple example. Both of these are iframes. I move cursor in this iframe and the other iframe gets its uh, coordinates. And it looks, it also works the other. Okay, how about HTML5 history API? Uh, we have dynamic web pages that need to be updated and need to be navigated. But when we change the URL, the web page will be refreshed. So when I want to share some address, uh, it needs to be done uh, with um, some, um, some other ways like using hash or uh, using some other techniques like create some uh, tiny URL and giving to it for the user or something like that. But HTML5 history API uh, is API that will uh, give us possibility to add use those uh, address bar info. We can uh, create that. Oh, i show you example. It's more easy to explain from that. Okay, this is navigation. <coughs> Look what happens in the address bar. I click second. Address bar will, was updated, but the page wasn't refreshing. And it just loads additional info. So we can create full dynamic web pages and still use and share these are like we have used to. We can even uh, navigate with the history API. We can say that go back or go forward or something like that. We can uh, keep the whole history in memory. Very handy. Okay, custom protocols and content handling. Uh, Let's think that we have a PDF we want to show. We don't have a Acrobat plugin or something, some other plugins that will show the PDF. With custom protocol and content handling, we could register that content MIME type to open in a certain web address. Uh, that address will take that uh, file into it and convert it, example, HTM or something we can uh, see in browser. So every time I click uh, PDF, it opens in that address and it, I see it in there. There's no need for additional plugins or anything like that. So user just have to allow that the web page has registered that MIME type or protocol to the browser. And after that, it will work. You don't need any other things. And you can use it in all devices. So the convert is done with uh, server-side scripting or JavaScripting or whatever, but it's 
from the um, uh, provider to decide which technique it use, not you, and you don't need to install anything. Uh, okay, SVGs, I have already uh, talked about these scalable vector graphics. They are a vector. So there is no, there is, as bitmap uh, pictures and, mo uh, and uh, graphics get blurred when we zoom or resize them, SVGs, they are vectors. They are always look sharp, they are always sharp no matter how big they are, because they are uh, drawn with lines. There are no pixels. SVG, you can do it uh, animations in SVG or uh, add filters to it or uh, command it via, via JavaScript, anything like this. These ribbons, are SVG images, and I have used SVG filter to create that shadow behind these ribbons. So, let's look at this example. I change browser. Uh, why I changed the browser? It's that because Opera and Firavox had some problems with this resize. In Opera, it won't work, and in Firefox, um, the scaling is not always sharp, e even. Uh, especially when using backgrounds. It is sharp when it's uh, once created, but if it's uh, scaled beyond the original uh, measurements, it gets blurred in Opera and Firefox if backgrounds are used. So I have used image tag for these ribbons that they look sharp in Opera and Firefox. Okay, but in Chrome, I have, it's always sharp. This resize function is, I can create element and put resize attribute, to it, resize attribute in to it. So after that, I am able to resize that element. And because this, element contains SVG image, which width is uh, determined to 100%. It is always the same size as this container, and it always looks sharp. Okay, HTML5 geolocation. There is need to get the user's location. Uh, they have some JavaScript libraries that can do this, but in HTML5, there's an API for requesting that data. Uh, we can ask the data in a more or less accurate, so uh, if uh, we are creating some navigation software. We need accurate GPS signal if that is available. But it takes time to get that G GPS position. So uh, browser will always um, give you the less accurate position first. And if more accurate position is required and ask, it is um, then give it to you when the device has get the 
example, GPS signal and GPS position and can uh, pass it to your code. Let's see what it says about our location. Browser asks, do I allow this web page to check where I am? Or the browser to pass, those, uh, pass to that data to the code? I can uh, allow this every time or allow it once and the browser will uh, remember it. It depends on browser. Uh, does it ask it any times, or can you uh, um, can you uh, ha or do you have some uh, more more options that it is always uh, stored or always asked, or you don't have to give the information. Okay, I allow. Whoa, it knows where we are. Uh, because I don't have a GPS or I don't have a mobile network or anything like this, that information is come from IP address. And in some, uh, some company networks that are routed via one starting point there will not be an accurate position because uh, example in Uvascula if I do the same in the office I will get that I'm in Helsinki because we are routed via private VPN network so we are always going into the internet via Helsinki. Uh, web workers. It is possible to run JavaScript and some heavy tasks background. We can just leave them to be uh, create or calculate whatever they want to calculate and give us the data when it's ready. It has no direct mm, direct access uh, to the uh, running uh, to the uh, uh, displayed site but the site has to ask data from it uh, it is possible to add multiple threads and anything like that and let's have an example uh, these calculations are done in background so I start to Create, uh, it took a little bit time when it tries to uh, search. So, example, quite massive search operations can be done in background. We can ask that uh, search for these uh, keywords. It runs, it runs, it runs. We ask uh, after a second or two seconds, are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? When it's ready, it uh, give us the data. We can. Uh, give multiple threads so we get a uh, search result uh, with uh, bots or something like that so we can the search doesn't take as long if you get it as a small parts compared to one big massive uh, result Um, I have to pull, but, uh, but I always uh, can do a so-called listener with JavaScript operations. So uh, it can be automated, but that background script can can't pass the data automatically. You must ask for it, or create a listener, or whatever you li like to call it. Okay, widgets. There's possible to create HTML widgets. 
they are HCM applications that are back in zip and has an XML fi file which determines uh, installation progress and other configuration. So I can use some applications locally or install it to web page or anything like this. This is already, oh, don't say, I don't say anything because I'm not sure if I remember this correctly, but this is V3C specification. I don't remember it's, is it already in recommended state, but I think it's very close to it. Uh, I have already talked about browser compatibility, uh, but it is good to have some <coughs> general rules to get and uh, to think through. Uh, many of these features are already supported in modern browsers. As you can see, uh, if you use Chrome, Firefox, or Opera, they are all updated automatically. So you have always the, just a second, battery is dying. Okay, uh, so if you are using Firefox, Chrome, Opera, you are using modern browser and you can use these features. Uh, the web pages look very good and you can use them. In, if you use EA9, uh, some of the features work. If you are the lucky one who already had a, a EA10, the final version, example, delivered with uh, Windows 8 RGM 10. Uh, it supports the same features as the Firefox, Chrome and Opera. It's very, it has very good HTML5 and these other features support. It's even better in some areas than these three variants. Uh, how about all the browsers? These presentations look in EA 9, like this. There is no response because EA 9 doesn't support uh, SVG filters and it doesn't support those um, CSS gradients or other thing. How about if I put EA in compatibility view. As you can see, I have create a check if SVG is uh, ain't supported, then use uh, GPG or PNG or some other versions of these files. This is, this, these are done with PNG images. They are a bit blurry, but they work. It doesn't look uh, same, but it works. And uh, this check is easily done with modernizer. I just type modernizer uh, yeah, dot SVG. It gives me, is it true or false? It's very easy to done. And I don't need to uh, do browser sniffing. Is it this or EA or whatever? I just need to ask, does it support these features? If not, uh, do I create a backup or is it okay for me? It's up to me to decide. Uh, so we can use this. We can create backups. We can um, use the web it's meant to be used. 
with a good design, there's no need to ignore these elements and functions and functionalities and properties and blah, blah, blah. And if you are not sure how widely spread some specification or property is, you can check it in caniuse.com. It isn't a perfect list of all, the, uh, all these new features, but it's quite wide. So I can check uh, is SVG supported and which level and is CSS gradients and other things supported. 